In our Sunrise Smart Start, our crews arriving on scene of a large fire on Gerald Street in Rochester. This happening between Clifford Avenue and Fernwood Ave. No word yet on any injuries or the cause of this fire. We will keep you updated throughout the morning. A 15-year-old is in critical but stable condition after a shooting on Saxton Street in Rochester. Officers responded to the area around 9 o'clock last night. They say the teen suffered a gunshot wound to the upper body while sitting inside his home. He was taken to the hospital with what police are calling serious injuries. Officers say they do have multiple suspects in custody. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. Rochester Mayor Malik Evans meeting with teenagers yesterday to address a rise in violence involving city's youth. This comes after police confirmed the first homicide of 2022, a 14-year-old boy who was shot and killed while entering a store on Herald Street Sunday night. In an effort to provide the community with resources to curb violence in the city, Evans is reaching out to teens saying their actions will have a lasting impact. A lot of things that you're doing right now, you may think that they just may be something that you're doing in passing or something that you may never use again, but trust me, um, all the things that you gain, your first job, um, learning how to, how, to, how to talk to someone, looking someone in the eye, learning how to solve a conflict, these are all things that grown-ups deal with. Police have identified the homicide victim as 14-year-old Julius Greer. No suspects are in custody for his murder. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. New this morning, Rochester police say a 28-year-old man was stabbed late last night on Brooks Avenue. Officers responded to the area around 11. The victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. No suspects are in custody. Let's check in with Christine to talk about the forecast, a forecast that has me very intrigued by what's coming tonight west of here. Yes, in the next 24 hours, things will definitely be changing for a lot of us with that lake effect snow. This morning, though, we are all good to go. We've got really quiet road conditions. We, I know we were a little bit icier yesterday, so uh, with temperatures warming throughout the day, definitely think there might be some wet roads uh, from that melting ice and snow. But other than that, we should be good to go. I'm anticipating little to no issues today. We've got the mild there in place, but yes, we do have that lake effect that we're forecasting for tomorrow. The closer you are to Buffalo, that's where those higher snow totals are going to be. So this is a very localized lake effect event like they so often like to be, ranging from low to high impact for places like Rochester. I think this is going to be a very manageable snow with reduced visibility at times, but I think the most difficult travel is going to be along I-90 traveling west towards Buffalo. So we'll definitely uh, keep you up to date as we continue to get that information, John. All right, Christine, as always, thank you. Gerald's Street is closed as we look at the traffic situation between Clifford Ave and Fernwood Ave for that fire we told you about. One accident on English Road that in Greece. Other than that, 390, 490, 590, the major arteries are all running right on time. Now for the latest on COVID-19. The Rochester City School District is considering seriously shifting to hybrid or remote learning. This comes after a Board of Education meeting last night in which the superintendent said a high number of students and staff members calling out sick may force their hand. Some schools say 40 to 50 percent of students did not show up for school on Monday. The Rochester Teachers Association had been pushing for remote learning, citing safety concerns. Superintendent Leslie Meyer Small said a move away from full in-person learning might look a little different. And as we sh have shared all along, the shift to remote learning could be offered at either one of three level one or more of three levels, the classroom level, the school level, and the district level. Um, and certainly in all instances, we want to make sure that the schools, our staff, and our students are prepared to continue instruction in a remote environment. News 8 has also learned that parents of RCSD students are being told that bus pickup for some might be as much as two hours late. As for when a decision on remote learning is made, the RTA president says it might come as soon as today. The Pittsburgh Central School District is asking parents to check their emails and phones each morning before school to see if there are any changes to their child's bus schedule. Now, the district is asking parents to look for these alerts around 6.30 each morning. If you do not receive a notification, you can assume your child's bus is running right on time. This comes after Pittsburgh canceled the day of school last month, citing a lack of 
bus drivers there. Staff illnesses are behind a temporary closure of U of R Medicine's Noise Health Urgent Care in Geneseo. The urgent care facility will be closed until Thursday, January 13th. Those needing immediate care are being told to go to the nearest emergency department or another urgent care. Others in need of non-urgent attention should see their primary care physicians. In Washington, Capitol Police, along with federal and local agencies, are ramping up security at the complex ahead of tomorrow's anniversary of the January 6th attack. Democrats plan on holding high-profile events there throughout the day, including remarks from President Biden and Vice President Harris. Jesse Tenor reports on the latest from police in D.C. Police are monitoring several events scheduled on the first anniversary of the attack on the U.S. Capitol, including one protest at the D.C. jail where a number of the attack suspects are being held. Really nothing that uh, is of great concern to us at this point. But Capitol Police Chief Tom Manger stresses his department is ready for anything. Stronger and better prepared to carry out its mission today. Um, than it was before January 6th of last year. Manger says work began immediately after the 6th to fix failures in intelligence, operational planning, and leadership. Now every officer has a cell phone, better training, and an improved process to request assistance from other law enforcement agencies. To make this campus um, as safe and secure as it can be. Democrats are largely controlling Thursday's events at the Capitol to commemorate the attack, which Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer cautions was not a one-off. January 6th was a symptom of a much broader illness that has now infected the modern Republican Party. GOP-led states across the country have passed numerous voting restrictions in response to former President Trump's claims about the election. And the former president just announced that he will be canceling his January 6th event, instead teasing ahead to a rally happening later this month. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. Three local men are currently being held in Washington for their alleged roles in the riots last January. No date has been set for the start of their potential trials. Time now for the GRE Morning Business Report. Financial losses from the COVID-19 pandemic now mark the third largest cost to insurers of any catastrophe, only behind Hurricane Katrina and the September 11th attacks. Insurance broker Howden estimates the losses at $44 billion to date. That's still far lower than the initial projections of more than $100 billion. Insurance companies have since excluded COVID-19 from many policies. Ford is doubling down on its commitment to electric vehicles. The company plans to nearly double annual production of its F-150 Lightning Electric pickup to 150,000 vehicles. Nearly 200,000 of the pickups have already been reserved ahead of the release in the spring. More Americans are moving to be closer to family. A new trend as people shift priorities during the pandemic. United Bandlines has released its latest moving study, which found Vermont is the state with the highest inbound migration, followed by South Dakota and South Carolina. On the flip side, it was New Jersey's fifth year taking the top spot for a mass exodus. Here's what some folks might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. The Amazing Race returns for its 33rd trip around the world tonight with back-to-back -back episodes on CBS. The season started filming in February of 2020, but the pandemic halted production, which was eventually able to wrap last fall. Catch The Amazing Race tonight right here at 8 p.m. Christine, one last word on the forecast as we wake up to a comfortable morning on this Wednesday. Yeah, comfortable, quiet. Temperatures are in the 30s, so we're definitely a lot better than we were this or yesterday morning. Buffalo already seeing 40, 34 in Rochester. We've got the southerly flow keeping us a little bit more mild uh, throughout the course of the morning. We've got temperatures that will be close to 40 by the time we get to the end of the day. I think we've got chances for a rain snow shower this afternoon and towards the dinner time hour, but for now we are staying quiet, but that rain snow shower all precludes uh, the cold air coming through. Then we've got lake effect snow showers that will be greeting us tomorrow morning, especially for those closer to Buffalo. So uh, Wyoming County, Batavia, as well as Erie, those places have that best chance to see that really, really high, uh, those high snow totals. We've got the reduced visibility that will be a factor too. So uh, I think travel is definitely going to be tricky for some of us on the Thursday morning commute. But we're finally getting in on some of that snow. Places like Rochester will have some flakes flying. I think it will be a lot more manageable, John. Head west, young man. That's what I'll be doing tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, <laughs> yes. as always. And thank you for watching us here on News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next.